and we're off to the races, as the fella said. And the first horse out of the gate is Just Soldiers, uh, and it usually is. Every magazine I always start with Just Soldiers. That's because it's always on hand, ready to go. Uh, Daryl's very good at submitting his stories on time, and in fact, usually way ahead of time. Uh, Daryl Kelly, as I mentioned last time, has been supplying these stories to us since day one, which is, this makes this story number 62 from Daryl, which is fantastic effort. He's the only one who's ever been able to keep up with the pace of the hungry beast that is contact. And when Daryl's stories come to me, they're in pretty good shape. Um, they're already edited by a different editor. Uh, so most of the work that I'm doing on these uh, stories is for contact style. So most of what you see me removing or changing throughout this is stuff that I learned at Army Newspaper. The basic premise is that we have a style book. My style book is in my head after all these years. So when I go through, I'm applying contact style to these words which may differ from other places just ever so slightly but the name of the game here is consistency not just consistency across Daryl's 62 stories but consistency across contact magazine as well by the way if it's not obvious this uh, video footage is sped up by a factor of about 10 uh, I'm not that quick at fiddling on my keyboard and uh, I do take a bit of time and care going through this so uh, for your sanity I have sped this up by a factor of about 10 and I don't really want to go through this in my new detail telling you everything I'm changing and why but if there is anything that you see me fiddling with uh, feel free to ask me specific questions in the comments below uh, I will answer specifics if you want me to, uh, but otherwise I'll just uh, zip through this and get on to the actual page layouts. where the actual page laying out starts and yes I did pre-arrange this to open at the right page Ta -da! so as I mentioned before just soldiers is done to a template and that again is for consistency and I copy and paste various elements from the word document straight into the appropriate spot in this blank template and as you can see from the headline there is some editing and tweaking that goes on along the way to make things fit and flow properly so purely on the fly today I decided to bring back an old element that I haven't actually used for quite a while uh, to house the intro paragraph to the story and I randomly grabbed issue number 54 to find one of those and copy and paste that into today's document just to add a bit of color. Now I didn't want to use the scarlet from the old one uh, because that was relevant to a different time period but uh, I thought I would try and match basic sandy color in that top left hand corner then copy and paste in that intro par and make it all fit nicely uh, I might also change the color on that text as well to make it suit the new color of the box 
I might just make the text a little bit bigger so it's uh, more even on the right hand side. Pretty happy with that. Now I'll bring in the text for the whole volume of the story. A little bit of fiddling going on here now to um, get the text to flow properly. Once I've got it roughed in, more or less, I start chasing widows and orphans. These are little uh, one-liners or one-words that are left hanging like at the top of a column or the bottom of a column. And I do a lot of fiddling around to get rid of those. You'll see a lot of that happening now. Making those little numbers smaller and raised up is called superscripting. I'm just doing a little bit of that now to uh, see how much space it saves me. And pulling back that space might fix some of my widows and orphans problems. So here we go with the superscripting all through the story. I hope I don't miss any, but if I do, Rosie will probably pick it up when she does a final proofread before, uh, pretty much in the last days of the magazine preparation, Rosie goes through the entire magazine, spell checking and looking for things that are out of place. In that process, Rosie does actually pick up quite a few things that I've missed. So it's great having an extra pair of eyes look over things right at the end. It saves embarrassment and improves the product overall. So a big thanks to Rosie for doing that. You know, it is a real thing too that it's hard to proofread your own work. So when I'm putting together a whole 84 page magazine, it's inevitable that I'm going to miss some stuff, so it's terrific that Rosie comes along and picks up quite a few errors that I've missed and cleans them up. So at the end of the day, Contact Magazine is a quality product with very few er errors in it, and I'm really proud of that fact. Uh, we, have, we have really done well over the years. I've even said to a few people at times, and I firmly believe this, that you will probably find fewer errors in a whole issue of Contact Magazine than you will in one press release by the average company or even the Department of Defence. It's a big claim to make, of course, but I will stand by that. If anyone wants to test me, you can you're more than welcome to go through a whole issue of Contact Magazine and count the errors in it and then go through any average ADF press release and see how many errors are in those. Changing the subject completely, here's one area of magazine production that really gives me a heartache. And that's the thorny subject of image resolution. A lot of people think that you pull an image off the internet and it's good to go. But on the internet images are only 72 dots per inch. And if I change that to 300 dots per inch, like you should do in a magazine, this image becomes 22 millimeters wide and that's really just not good enough. It's uh, too small to be useful for anything except I did place it on the page for a while here as you'll see. Um, but I quickly deleted it because it's just not of any use at that size. 
uh, even reducing it from 300 down to about 200 dots per inch is still just too small. I tried sharpening, but there's really not much you can do with it when it's that small. But as I said, I placed it on the page for a while, messed around with some other layouts, but in the end, it just had to go. You'll see me here doing a lot of minor tweaking, pushing and pulling things around the page. I'm trying to line up borders, the borders of each box. That's for aesthetic reasons, to make everything look balanced. Uh, I'm also going to be experimenting here with um, positioning. I'll, I'll move this photo completely onto the other page. Uh, I'll find a new photo to go on this page. And uh, there's a lot of messing about at this stage, just trying to get things to look nice and balanced. Uh, white space is okay, but not too much white space. I ended up with a big block of white space there, so what I did was uh, pull out a quote from the story uh, and put that in big letters uh, to fill up some, some of that white space. This next section is really sped up. What's happening here is I'm looking on the internet for a relevant photo to go with this story. It can't be just any photo, of course. It has to be A, geographically relevant to the story. B, it has to be big enough so that when I make it 300 dots per inch, it isn't a postage stamp size. And C, it has to be copyright free. Copyright is a big deal for publishers, so I'm well across the issues of what I can and can't use off the internet. But in the end, I found this terrific photo by Frank Hurley, which was in sepia tone when I found it. But in the end, I decided that uh, it was better off as a proper black and white. Having found this great photo, then I decided that the portrait of the soldier was better off at the start where his name is, and the battle scene photo is better off down the back where most of the action in the story takes place. So there you go, that's the first four pages of Contact Magazine properly laid out and looking pretty good I think. This layout phase on this story it took me just over an hour as you can see by the little countdown clock and that's about normal for this spread which is one of the least complicated in the magazine so with that out of the road i'm warmed up and ready to go so come back next time and check out what i do with a let's say a seven pager see you next time